So this video is a primer for non-technical people to understand the basics of artificial intelligence, specifically to understand what's under the hood of chat GPT, the AI that's taking the world by storm. Let's go. At its most basic level, there are two things you need to know about ChatGPT. One is that ChatGPT is made by OpenAI, a research organization that focuses on developing and promoting friendly artificial intelligence. Two is that ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence designed specifically for answering questions, performing tasks, and solving problems in a very conversational manner. It's as simple as that. However, because of how complex it gets under the hood, people are finding very interesting uses for ChatGPT. I've personally used it to write fictional stories, to program hardware, to discuss country policy, and develop branding for a company. It's all very surface level stuff, very basic stuff, but the videos are on my channel, you can check it out. But let's dive a little bit deeper, because to understand ChatGPT, you need to understand artificial intelligence. So we've all used some variants of artificial intelligence in one way or another. Google Assistant, Apple Siri, Amazon Alexa, and so on and so forth. We may have also used artificial intelligence without knowing it, specifically when you're having online conversations with customer care centers. Most responses you get when you're chatting with customer care before they assign you to an actual human, you may not realize that you're using artificial intelligence and it's using AI in the back end. In fact, many, many services you rely on use some form of artificial intelligence, like web searching on, on Google, how YouTube and TikTok knows what other videos you might like, or how Netflix determines what else to recommend to you. There are an uncountable number of applications and systems using artificial intelligence to interact with us in the real world. Now, a foundation that's important to understand is this. Computers run on very specific programs designed to do very specific tasks based on very specific user inputs from the user or another computer. Microsoft Word, for example, is specifically designed to respond to your desire to write documents and will respond to specific buttons you click or specific keys that you press. A robot will perform very specific things based on very specific instructions. So generally, there's a lot of specificity. So keep this in mind. The idea is that computers respond explicitly to highly specific instructions and inputs from you, the user, or another computer system. Anything outside of those specific instructions, it may not respond or it could crash. We humans are used to interacting in more nuanced ways that involve context, sentiment, social and emotional clues, especially in a world that requires very, very high tolerance for errors or mistakes, or for situations that don't have all the information we need in order for us to make a decision. Artificial intelligence tries to turn all of that highly high specificity on its head by creating computer systems and programs that can respond with much wider flexibility, knowledge, and understanding. You know, just like humans. And they do this through a wide range of concepts or branches of study. Because what we collectively call artificial intelligence is actually a combination of many things, mostly categorized into about six broad groups. These groups are machine learning, neural networks, natural language processing, robotics, expert systems, and fuzzy logic. I won't go into the details of all of them, but I want to highlight four of these concepts to help us understand the foundation for artificial intelligences like ChatGPT. So this next section gets a little bit deep, uh, but it's still easy to understand, I think. But since it's necessary for you to understand how ChatGPT works, I'll summarize it briefly, and then you can skip over to the next section. I still recommend that you go through the full video because it's really insightful for your general knowledge of artificial intelligence. So ChatGPT specifically harnesses the following areas of artificial intelligence. One, machine learning, which is a way for computers to get better at certain tasks by learning from a wide variety of data. Two is natural language processing, which is a way for computers to communicate naturally with us by understanding and generating human-like language. Three, neural networks, which are a type of artificial intelligence that are inspired by the structure and function of the human brain. 
And finally, for fuzzy logic, which is a type of mathematical system that's used to represent and understand information that is uncertain, imprecise, or unclear. Or, you know, fuzzy. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot more happening behind the scenes with any sort of artificial intelligence development at the scale of ChatGPT, more than I can even comprehend. Uh, but this is a rough overview for the sake of understanding what's happening behind the hood. Now, you can watch the next segment to dive a little bit deeper. This is very good for your basic understanding of AI in general. Or you can skip to the segment after that that then explains ChatGPT. Again, I still recommend that you go through the full video. It's really helpful, really insightful, you know. Uh, so one, uh, machine learning. Machine learning is a way for computers to get better at certain tasks by learning from data without being explicitly programmed to do so. So basically you give a computer system a large amount of data and allow it to discover patterns and relationships within that data. The system can then use these patterns to make predictions or decisions about any new data or information that it may not have seen before. Overall, machine learning is a really cool way for computers to learn and improve on their own. For example, machine learning algorithms are used in self-driving cars to recognize and respond to objects in the environment. So cars are taught through machine learning to know what another car looks like, what a human looks like, what a human riding a bicycle looks like, what street signs mean, what street roads could look like, etc. It's also used in spam filters to identify and block unwanted emails. And finally, it's used to recognize voices and speech in things like speech recognition software, which can convert spoken word into text, which allows you to dictate notes and use virtual assistants like Google Assistant, Apple Siri, or Amazon Alexa. Which brings me to natural language processing. Natural language processing is a way for computers to communicate naturally with us humans by understanding and generating responses in human language or human-like language. It involves using algorithms to analyze and interpret text, speech, and other forms of human language, and then perform tasks like language translation, summarizing of text, or answering questions. We all know that human language is complex, highly nuanced, and can be terribly ambiguous. So it can be difficult for computers or machines to understand and interpret human language accurately. However, advances in machine learning and artificial intelligence have made it more and more possible for computers to perform many natural language processing tasks with a very high degree of accuracy. Natural language processing is used in virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa, which are able to understand and respond to voice commands and questions in a fairly natural language. Also, natural language processing is used in customer care. You might have actually chatted with a natural language chatbot when you DM'd or contacted a big brand. It's also used in social media analytics to understand and analyze our conversations to sort of gauge sentiment of what people are thinking. So I think you're beginning to see the connections here. ChatGPT has been trained on an insane amount of data using machine learning to understand how to analyze queries and provide a solution, and then through natural language processing, present that information in a manner that is easily understood by humans. The third thing is neural networks, which are a type of artificial intelligence that is inspired by the structure and function of our human brains. Our brains are made up of billions of cells called neurons, which are responsible for processing and transmitting information throughout the entire body. Neurons help us make connections to think, learn, and perceive the people and the world around us in very complex ways by sort of self-feeding their own systems. Computer neural networks are designed to mimic this self-governing behavior. They're made up of interconnected nodes called neurons, which are organized into layers. Each neuron receives information from other neurons and processes that information or data using a set of general, let's call them settings, and then sends that to the next neuron and to the next layer for more and more processing. Neural networks are used in a wide variety of tasks, including image and speech recognition, and again, natural language processing. They are particularly useful for tasks that involve complex patterns or relationships in the data, as they're able to learn and adapt to these patterns in a way that is similar to how the human brain works. 
One of the main advantages of neural networks is that they can learn and improve their performance over time as they process more data and receive more feedback on their performance. And this is feedback from themselves, actually. They are also able to handle large amounts of data and we'll see why this is important later. And finally, fuzzy logic. I, I love that word. Fuzzy logic is a type of mathematical logic that's used to handle information that is uncertain, imprecise, or a little unclear or ambiguous. You know, like how ambiguous the world around us is. It's based on the idea that something can be true to a certain degree instead of just being completely true or completely false. Those of you who know a little bit about com how computers work know that at its most basic level, every computer is using pure logic represented through ones or zeros, on or off, true or false. Fuzzy logic allows computers to handle uncertainty in that range and imprecision in information in a way that has more flexibility, context and intuition than just binary logic, which is yes or no. Fuzzy logic is useful in situations that have high degrees of uncertainty, like decision making and natural language processing. So, in the case of ChatGPT, tools like machine learning have given it training on an insane amount of data, specifically text data, and then other tools like neural networks and fuzzy logic help it interpret and understand questions and responses the way a typical human brain would. Even when things are a little ambiguous or uncertain, it can approximate a response that kind of makes sense to us. And then through natural language processing, it is able to represent or present that information in an incredibly natural manner that mimics styles of human conversation. All right? Okay, um, welcome back from that deep dive. Um, please remember that this is like a 5% representation of any of these concepts and the AI experts are going to absolutely crucify me in the comments. Please don't do that. What you can do and should do though is hit that subscribe button, turn on the notifications. I'd really appreciate that. It helps with the channel, helps with the algorithm. So ChatGPT describes itself as a large language model trained by OpenAI. Two new terms here model and large language model. Bear with me, we are almost at the end. An artificial intelligence model is the combination of data, tools, systems, and algorithms that are used to train computers to process and analyze information. Let's try and simplify that a little. Think of it like a package of knowledge that helps an artificial intelligence collect, interpret, and respond to information. Typically, these packages of knowledge or models are trained and tailored to specific real-world situations like understanding language, creating digital art, or driving cars. These models are very useful from an artificial intelligence perspective because they help AI systems understand and interpret new information or data that they may not have interacted with before. Okay, here's another way to think about it. Humans learn languages, right? Or we acquire packages of language knowledge. By soaking in an incredible amount of data during our childhoods and early adulthood based on the information, situations, and people that we experience and interact with. As we grow older, this package of knowledge or language model becomes a foundation for us to understand anything new within that language, even if we've never encountered that new thing before like learning a new word, a new phrase, or the best or the thing that everyone likes to do when they learn a new language, learning curse words. And the more we learn these new things, the more our language model expands and becomes larger, which is what an AI expert would call a large language model. So a large language model is a type of artificial intelligence that is designed to generate human-like text. It is trained on a very large amount of text data that typically consists of billions of words and is able to generate coherent and realistic responses to requests or queries given to it just like a human typically would. And so, to wrap it up and bring it all full circle, ChatGPT is a large language model, artificial intelligence that has been developed to simulate conversations with human users. To see a real-world example of what ChatGPT can do, check out my other videos on artificial intelligence. There's a whole bunch of them in the channel. 
For a fun history of AI, check out my introduction to AI. All the links are in the description or somewhere in the channel. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Peace.